I am the most excellent Mr. Daycock and today I am going to be teaching you about Maclaurin series. So here's a question. Find the Maclaurin series for f of x equal to sine of x. Now to be able to do this first of all you need to know what a Maclaurin series is. And a Maclaurin series is such that it's a way of writing any function as a series of powers. Oh. And we want this to be true for at least a lot of value of x, if not all value of x, but all value of x in the domain that we care about. So we want it to be of the form a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed plus ex to the 4. And we want to cap to carry on forever and ever and ever and ever. And it would be really, really nice to be able to do this. And it turns out we can. It turns out for a lot of functions, this is, in fact, doable. Now, in this case, we were asking for sine of x being of this form a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed plus e to the e x to the 4 dot dot dot. And it's really, really easy to work out the a because all we have to do is plug in x equals 0. And we get sine of 0 is equal to, well, everything here will become 0. And so we're left with sine of 0 equals a, and sine of 0 is 0, therefore a equals 0. And we've got the a. Brilliant. Now, it seems tempting at this point, maybe just try a bit different value. Let's try put in x equals 1. But this is a bad idea, because what's going to happen is you'll get sine of 1, which, yeah, we can work that out. But that's just going to be equal to this infinite sum. And that's not nice. Or maybe try sine of pi, um, which again, is nice and easy to work out. But again, we're just going to get an infinite sum, this time with powers of pi. What we need is to want some way of changing this formula so that it gives us a really nice expression that we can maybe just plug zero into again. But it has to be a different expression. And the trick here is to differentiate. So we're going to then differentiate. So we differentiate with respect to x. Now on the left hand side, we are going to get cosine of x because we're differentiating sine of x and we're going to get cosine of x. And on the right hand side, we're going to get something slightly different. We're going to get b of x differentiated, just differentiate to bx. c of x squared, well that differentiates to 2c Oh, sorry, b of x differentiates to just b. That's very important. Differentiates to 2cx. d of x cubed differentiates to 3dx cubed. And if e of x to the 4 will differentiate to 4ex squared. Wait, no. Let me get these coefficients the right way around. There we go. So 3dx squared, 4ex cubed. And now we can plug in, plug in x equals 0 again. And this will give us something slightly different because we're going to get cosine of 0 equals, and everything except the b is going to cancel out, b. And cosine of 0 is 1, so we get b equals 1. And so now we've identified a equals 0 and b equals 1. Very important. And then how do we get the next one? Well, we're just going to differentiate again. Differentiate again. And so we're going to get, well, the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So minus sine of x is going to be equal to, and we're differentiating again, so we're going to get 2c. Obviously, the b is going to disappear. The derivative of a constant is 0. Then we're going to get 3dx squared. Differentiate that. Multiply by 2, so we're going to get 6dx. And then this one's going to come down, and we're going to get 12ex squared. And then we're going to plug in 0. And we get minus sine of 0 
is equal to 2c. All of these terms after the 2c are going to disappear. And that's going to give us c equals 0. And then to find that next one, let's find out d. You're going to, have to differentiate again. d by dx of negative sine of x is negative cosine of x. And of course, remember, in each case, we're differentiating this bit. We're not differentiating it with 0 plugged in, because that would just always give us 0. So we're differentiating the function in terms of x each time. And on the right hand side, the 2c is going to disappear. It's going to, obviously, the derivative of a constant is nothing. And 6dx differentiates to 6d plus 24ex. And then don't forget, there are still a load of terms on the end of all of these. I haven't been writing the dot, dot, dot every time, but there are always all these extra terms. This is an infinite series, but fortunately, all of the extra bit disappears when we plug in zero. And we plug in x equals zero, we get minus cosine of zero is equal to 6d, which means 6d is equal to negative one, because cosine of zero is one, therefore negative cosine of zero is negative one, and we get d is equal to negative one sixth. And we can keep on going like this, but so far we have got if we go back to our sine of x equals a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed plus ex to the 4 plus fx to the 5 plus dot dot dot. And plug in the values we've got, which is a equals 0, b equals 1, c equals 0, d equals negative 1 sixth. And if we were to carry on, on the E, we'd get another sign, so E would be equal to zero, and F, we'd get back to another positive cosine, and we would find out that F was equal to, I believe, positive 120. And we can carry on like that, and what we'll find is, we get sine of X is equal to X, because obviously the A's are going to disappear. In fact, let's line these up, end up with X, minus one sixth of x cubed plus one hundred and twentieth of x to the five. And arguably those terms in between the squared and the power of four are still there, but they are um, zero, their coefficient is zero. And this is actually very powerful. So now we've got sine x as a power series and we could carry it on as far as we needed to go sine x equals x minus one sixth of x cubed plus 120th of x to the power of five plus dot 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 and we can get ourselves an approximation so let's say i want to know what sine of um, 17 is well i would just plug that in i'd get 17 minus one sixth times by 17 cubed plus one over 120 times by 17 to the power of five and this is very similar to what your calculator would do. Your calculator has series like this built in, ways of calculating fun um, polynomials, not calculating non-polynomials using polynomial approximations. And if you're the better you want the approximation, the further you need to go. So this here wouldn't be a great approximation because our 17 is quite large and our series hasn't gone very far. But if we carried on that series for say 100 terms, suddenly that approximation would be really, really good. It would be almost perfect. And so this is a very, a very effective way of doing it, so long as you give yourself enough terms and it can allow you to calculate anything or program a computer to calculate any function. Now there is one caveat, we were differentiating, which means in the case of sine and cosine and other trigonometric functions, we have to be in radians. Because if you remember, we cannot differentiate sine and cosine unless we're using radians, because otherwise things get very, very nasty and we'd end up with a whole load of different numbers here. So it has to be in radians. But ultimately, that there is how Maclaurin series work. So let's look at another example, and this one works out very, very nicely. 
find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals e to the x. So we want e to the x to be equal to a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed plus ex to the 4 plus dot dot dot. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to plug in x equals 0. And I'm going to get that e to the 0 equals a. Because everything else, when I plug in 0, is going to disappear. And so I get a equals 1. Nice. Then I'm going to differentiate. And I'm going to get, well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That's the whole point. And both are derivative on, of the actual function. a differentiates to nothing bx we get b plus 2cx plus 3dx squared plus 4ex cubed plus dot 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 and carries on forever. We plug in x equals 0. We get e to the 0 equals b. And so we get b is 1. Then at this point, you might want to take a moment and say, what is, think to yourself, what is c going to be? What is d going to be? See if you can spot it before we get there. Differentiate again, we get e to the x, and that's going to be the same as 2c, because when we differentiate, plus 6dx, make sure you can see why I'm getting these values, plus 12ex squared, plus dot dot dot. Plug in x equals 0, and I get e to the 0 is equal to 2c, and so 2c is 1, and so c equals a half. Keep going. We're going to get e to the x is equal to 6d plus 24ex plus dot dot dot. Loads of extra stuff. It carries on forever, infinitely. But we're just not writing all down. And we get x equals 0. We get e to the 0 is equal to 6d. And so d is equal to 1 sixth. Keeping on going, we get d by dx, we get e to the x is equal to 24e plus some stuff which we haven't worried about. And we get x equals, plug in x equals 0, and we get e to the 0 is equal to 24e, because all the other stuff, all the extra stuff is going to disappear. And so we get e equals 124. And so our series expansion, we're going to get e to the x is equal to 1, because our a was 1, plus x, because our b was 1, plus 1 half of x squared, because our c was a half, plus 1 sixth of x cubed, because our d was a sixth, and plus 1 24th of x to the 4, plus dot dot dot, carrying on forever. Now, I said this was a very nice one, but it's not looking very nice right now. What are these numbers? This 2, this 6, this 24. Well, the trick is to remember where it came from. This 6 came from 2 times 3. This 24 came from 2 times 3 times 4. Or, in fact, maybe we could add an extra 1 on the front. Um, this, therefore, this 2 would have come from 1 times 2. And this 1 in front of the x would have just come from 1. And what we get here is these are actually the factorials. So our way of writing e to the x is e to the x is equal to 1 plus x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial plus dot 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 forever. And this is an incredibly nice way of representing e to the x. And you can try it out. This Already, this converges very, very quickly. This is a very, very nice series. You can try reasonably moderately large values of x up to just this term in your calculator and see that both sides will give you the same thing. And also, more importantly, this spotting this allows us to get a more general formula a more general formula for Maclaurin series. So let's consider a general function f of x equals 
all of this stuff. Um, a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed plus ex to the 4 plus dot dot dot. Well, what I find out, I'm going to plug in 0. And I get that a equals f of 0. That's nice. Differentiate. And we're going to get f dash of x. Because obviously this is a general function, so we don't know anything about it other than it's the its own derivative. So we end up with b equals 2 b plus 2cx plus 3dx squared. Again, make sure you do see why this is coming out, making sure you see why when we differentiate this, we're getting this. And then we're going to try x equals 0. And that gives us that b is equal to f dash of 0. So almost the same thing, but not quite. And then we differentiate. And we get f double dash of x is going to be equal to 2c plus 6. Although I'm not going to write it as 6. What I really want to write it as is 3 times 2. Lots of dx plus 4 times 3. Lots of ex squared plus dot 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 and that tells me that if I plug in x equals zero I'm going to get f double dash of zero equals 2c i.e c is equal to f double dash of zero over two although I'm going to write it as factorial for exactly the reason we saw a moment ago so we get c is f double dash of zero over two factorial we'll differentiate again and we get f triple dash of x is equal to 2 times 3 times 2 dx, oh, no x anymore because we differentiated, plus 4 times 3 times 2, because that 2 is going to come down, ex plus dot dot dot, plug in 0, and we get f triple dash of 0 is equal to. Well, 2 times 3 times 1 is 3 factorial times d, and so d is equal to f triple dash of 0 over 3 factorial. And carrying on from there, we get e is equal to f quadruple dash of 0 over 4 factorial, and f, as it were, let's write it slightly differently, let's write it lowercase, well, standard print form, and we get that would be f quintuple dash of 0 over 5 factorial, and so on and so forth. And we get our general term, our nth coefficient in front, will be f differentiated. Now, it's the nth coefficient. And remember, it's always 1 before. So it's f differentiated n minus 1 times. And we use little brackets there to indicate its differentiation. Evaluated at 0 divided by n minus 1 factorial. And there you go. That's all you have to do to work this out. Anything f of x can always be evaluated as, and now we plug in what we've got, f of 0 plus f dash of 0 times x, because remember that was our b term. Let's, think, let's write that out. So we want f f of x is equal to a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed plus ex to the 4 plus dot dot dot. Then it's going to be written as plugging in a with f of 0, b was f dash of 0, c was f double dash of 0 over 2 factorial x squared plus f triple dash of 0 over 3 factorial x cubed plus f quadruple dash of 0 over 4 factorial times by x to the fourth plus dot 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 forever and notice that we have got these matching up so when I write it down I can write it actually the, the nth term a little bit nicer at this point noticing where things match up rather than using n minus 1 in every case I can actually write it as f of n in brackets evaluated at 0 
over n factorial times by x to the n. And technically that is the n plus 1 term rather than the nth term, but that doesn't matter when I'm writing out my general formula. Okay, and there you go. That is your general formula for a Maclaurin series. So in this case, if you learn this formula, you never ever have to go through the whole process. You can literally just plug in the values that you want, so long as you find the derivatives evaluated at zero. You still need to find those derivatives, you still need to evaluate the zero, but then you can just immediately plug them into the formula rather than differentiating the whole formula every time. Okay, there you go, that's your introduction to McLaurin series. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.